Next week, Rockstar's latest open world masterpiece is coming to PC. Better frame rate, higher resolution, and superior performance are just a few of the big changes we can expect when we return to the Old West. Here are 33 things you need to know about Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC. The first of many technical improvements is increased draw distances, which is the maximum distance of objects in a 3D space. Being an open world game, this is super important for the realism and the immersion of the experience, and luckily with Red Dead Redemption 2 on console, we already had fairly impressive draw distances already. This effect is going to really shine in all of the mountain ranges and river valleys and wide open prairies where you're seeing very far distances where you can go as far as the eye can see. Typically, when a game has increased draw distances, that has an inverse relationship with FPS, but we know that there are frame improvements as well, and that's something we're gonna touch on in just a bit. We're getting higher quality global illumination and ambient occlusion for improved day and night lighting. Without getting too technical, this is going to affect the way that light bounces off trees and cuts through clouds and fogs and how lanterns and fires appear in the night and how that light scatters across surfaces. Like many things in this game, the lighting is already very impressive and this will just bump it up to the next level. And I'm particularly interested to see how this enhances the experience of going from day to night and riding through a storm and coming out on the other side, because this is when you see a lot of those lighting systems really shine. High quality snow trails will be featured in the PC port. This is something you see in the Grizzly Mountains towards the beginning of the story, and anytime you're going into any snow at all, whether you're on horseback or you're just on your feet, anything that cuts through the snow, any animal, any object whatsoever is going to produce a snow trail I'm curious to see whether this is particularly snow trails or just all snow effects across the board, if it's a particle thing, because we already see snow falling off of tree branches very realistically, or getting on Arthur's clothes, for example, and kind of brushing off and falling off as he's riding. This isn't confirmed or anything, but it would really blow my mind if these trails filled back up with snowfall. Improved reflections are coming. This is something you'll experience anytime you're in front of a mirror, whether you're shaving, going to a barber or a tailor, but also anytime you're seeing something reflected off of water, whether that's a landscape or houses, whatever it may be, this improvement should affect the quality of that as well. Right now, if you zoom in very closely on a reflection, it doesn't look very good. And that's because we can assume that Rockstar is using another camera to render a lower resolution image version of the scene to make it look like it's actually a reflection when it really isn't. That's because reflections and rendering another version of the scene that's exactly the same, like a copy, is very resource intensive in terms of performance. So we'll have to see how Rockstar improves this on PC. Next is deeper, higher resolution shadows at all distances, and higher quality ambient occlusion is going to affect this. That's something we've already talked about. So better lighting system means better shadows most of the time. The good thing is that shadows are already great at long distances, but if you zoom in, the resolution isn't great. So we're gonna see an improvement there. And I'm hoping we see an improvement in cutscenes because if you look up close sometimes, with hair, for example, you see a lot of jagged edges and some inconsistencies that make it look not as natural or realistic as it could be. So I'm hoping this is where we see improvement as well. They're adding tessellated tree textures, which in layman's terms means they're adding more depth to trees across the board. Right now, if you go into first person and walk up to a tree, it's not going to look super pretty because it wasn't meant to be looked at that closely. But with tessellation, you're going to see more depth with these trees, and as a result, they will look more realistic from whatever distance you're viewing them at. We'll get improved grass and fur textures for added realism in every single plant and animal. Along with the tree textures, everything's getting upgraded and will look much better at a closer distance. And something to note 
is that Red Dead is already a big game with a 98 gigabyte requirement to download on Xbox One X. The minimum spec for PC requires 150 gigabytes. And if I had to guess, a lot of that extra space should be the textures that we're seeing with trees, fur, grass, and anything else that is improved. Red Dead 2 will have HDR support on PC. If you aren't familiar, HDR preserves details that may be lost in games due to limiting contrast ratios. So essentially what that means is bright things are going to be even brighter in the game, like the sun or any kind of light source, and then dark things are going to be darker. So shadows, anything that's literally the color black is going to be darker if it indeed is supposed to be darker. And you'll be able to make out details in both scenarios and everything in between if your display supports HDR. Same thing goes with resolution. If your display supports 4K, then it will be supported and beyond. Now we don't know what the upper limit is for beyond, but I'm sure you guys can guess. If Grand Theft Auto 5 is any example, the game is just going to support whichever display resolution you're currently playing the game on. It's worth noting that Red Dead was already running at native 4K on Xbox One X. It wasn't upscaled and there weren't any shortcuts like that. If you were running that display setup for the Xbox One X, then you should see similar results on PC. If you're running a dual or triple monitor setup or some kind of ultra wide display, that configuration will also be supported with Red Dead. If GTA is any example, you can switch between ratios. Even if you just have a 16x9 display, you'll have something like 16x10 or switch to another monitor if that's something that you'd like to do. Last and definitely not least is faster frame rates. As it stands now, Red Dead is locked to 30 FPS and it's fairly consistent. It only dips in certain areas and in certain cutscenes. That 30 limitation will be completely unlocked for Red Dead. And if GTA again is any example, it largely depends on your graphical settings, your draw distances, the ambient occlusion, you know, all of those things. If you turn them on and off, it will improve or lower your FPS. V-Sync especially will cap your upper limit of FPS. Turning that off will increase your frames, but open you up to things like screen tearing. So it really depends on your setup, whether you wanna keep V-Sync on or keep it off. Red Dead 2 on PC will feature new details in the world, like claw marks of a passing bear on a tree, or being able to see the individual spines on a cactus move in the wind. Things like a train passing by on a faraway horizon that you couldn't see before, or embers sparkling in the night sky above a fire. I'd expect there to be many more details, not just the ones on this list, tiny little improvements that increase the immersion and the visual fidelity of this game. There will be three new bounty missions. First is for Herman Zizendorf, who has been stealing tools from tradesmen. That is a bounty mission that will start off in Blackwater. Next is to hunt down ex-Confederate cavalry officer Camille de Millemont. He's wanted dead or alive near the Catfish Jackson's homestead, and we're also told to expect backup because he always has his loyal men with him. And then we have Bart Kavanaugh and his gang. We're going to find them in Big Valley, and this is a dead or alive bounty as well but we're cautioned to use stealth in order to get him without alerting his gang. Otherwise, it's going to be a whole mess of trouble. In one of many instances, Rockstar is bringing content from Red Dead Online back into the story mode. We're getting two gang hideouts for the Del Lobos gang. The first is Gap Tooth Breach, which is located in the upper part of New Austin in the western region of the map and then Solomon's Folly, which is in a similar area, a little bit southeast of that, once again in New Austin. Next is two new treasure maps in the form of Landmarks of Riches and the Elemental Trail. And the treasure maps that are already in the game, if they're anything to judge by, are like side missions triggered by random stranger events or going to a specific location to find where the treasure map will be no matter what. 
and then deciphering some sort of code or visual clue, a drawing, for example, that points you to a certain location. And then that'll lead you to things like gold bars or just a ton of cash. They're a really good way to get a lot of money very quickly. There's a new mission titled To the Ends of the Earth, and based on the description that we're given, it sounds like we'll be sent to various parts of the map, pretty much every single corner, in order to find and collect these rare herbs, turn them in, and then get a variety of rewards back, not just a single thing, something that will appease all different types of players. There are several new weapons coming to the story mode on PC. First is the M1899 pistol. It's a new semi-automatic handgun with clip-loaded ammo. It'll be one of only three semi-auto pistols in Red Dead. We had the Mauser pistol and the semi-automatic pistol before this one. So very high rate of fire and also a super quick reload speed. The Evans Repeater is coming over from Red Dead Online into the story mode. So if you're unfamiliar, this is a high capacity repeater. It's got really high accuracy, reload speed, and range. It's a very nice weapon. The High Roller Double Action Revolver also comes over from the online mode. This one is very unique. It has the highest rate of fire of all revolvers, the fastest reload speed, but it's got the lowest accuracy and lowest damage per bullet. It's also got this really cool design going on, and it was available at Fences in online, so perhaps we'll see the same thing in the story. Finally, the Lamotte revolver comes over from Red Dead Online as well. It is unique in that you can switch over to a shotgun mode and shoot shells instead of revolver rounds and go back and forth between the two. It's a fairly slow firing gun and it has an even slower reload speed. So it's kind of a give and take on that, but the shotgun aspect is definitely the most unique part of this weapon. There's a large variety of new horses coming to the PC version as well. We've got the Warped Brindle Arabian, which falls under the superior class. It has better than average health, stamina, speed, and acceleration. The Few Spot Appaloosa is described as a beautiful and hardy, ideal horse for cross-country journeys. This kind of breed falls under the work category and most of these fall below average in terms of health, stamina, speed, and acceleration. The Perlino and Illusion horse is coming over from Red Dead Online. This one falls under the war category because it has higher than average health and it isn't spooked easily by creatures. So if a bear or a wolf comes up, for example, you won't get bucked off of the Andalusian. Another horse coming over from Red Dead Online is the Red Chestnut Arabian. So similar to the Warped Brindle, but I will note that the Red Chestnut has lower than average stats compared to other Arabian coat styles on Red Dead Online, but that could be a factor of, you know, balancing and other things like that in the multiplayer setting. And then we have three new wild horse variations. These are different coat styles that you won't see for sale in stables. These are the Buttermilk Buckskin Kentucky Saddler, the Liver Chestnut Morgan, and the Gold Palomino Tennessee Walker, all of which fall under the riding category of breed. Rockstar is adding five new trinkets to equip and give us small little bonuses to play around with. The first is Hawk Talon, which decreases your stamina bar drain speed by 30% when you're drawing a bow, so that'll be perfect for hunting. The new Cat Eye Trinket increases the length of fortifying tonic effects by 20%. So if you guys are unfamiliar, when you take a tonic, it fortifies your health, your dead eye, or your stamina bar. This increases the limit of these values beyond what you would normally get. So if you need to run away for a long time, for example, with your stamina bar, fortifying it will let you do that for a set period of time. And this will increase the length of your ability to do that. The Shark Tooth Trinket increases your horse bonding experience bonus by 10%. So if you get a new horse, one of the new ones that we mentioned before, you'll be able to level it up and make it trust you more quickly. The Turtle Shell Trinket increases your health bar refill speed by 10%. This will be especially useful in combat if you're doing a certain mission that requires a lot of enemies to be down. This will be very useful. 
The Crowbeak Trinket will increase the ammo that you loot by 10%. Instead of going back to buy ammo and refill before any kind of combat, you'll be able to stay up on your reserves with this one. And finally, if you end up pre-ordering Red Dead 2 on PC before the game comes out, you'll get the Outlaw Survival Kit, a War Horse, a new treasure map, and a cash bonus all in story mode, and then also 50 golden bars to spend in Red Dead Online for PC. That was 33 things you need to know about Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC. Once again, this game is launching very soon, so I'm planning to make several videos showing off one of the best video games of this generation here on my channel. Make sure and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss a thing. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.